Hi, thanks for tuning in to part two of my vlogs on how to get freelance clients or how to get more freelance clients. Um, in part one, we've covered off um, guest speaking, guest blogging, pitching, um, online portfolios. If you didn't catch that video, hop on back to YouTube and watch that one first. Um, and now I'm gonna crack on with my last couple of tips. So, I'm gonna start off with a point on networking. Um, this is crucial for building your client database. I think um, and nobody would, would disagree with that. Um, I guess my, my pointers with regards to networking are that firstly, you need to identify the type of events you might meet future clients at. So look for tweet ups on Twitter, um, join event groups on Facebook, join meetup groups, um, eventually perhaps start your own group, perhaps start your own you know monthly meetup with other um, travel bloggers and freelancers um, because it's having conversations that that always leads to potential opportunities. Um, my second point with regards to networking would be just always make sure you're wearing your game face. So um, you never quite know who you're talking to at a tweet up for example. A lot of bloggers have other jobs, they have second hidden lives so they might be there um, as initially to talk about their own blog but actually by day they're the social media manager or marketing manager for a large uh, travel company that might be interested in working with you as a freelancer. Um, be appropriate however in terms of if you're at a relaxed informal event having a few beers don't start shoving your services down somebody's throat um, but just yeah keep your professional face on swap contact details I think it's all in the follow-up it's all in the follow-up details um, but yeah it's important to get out there and make those initial connections my next one LinkedIn um, here in Australia in particular they love LinkedIn um, I have been approached by lots of different um, agencies and, and recruiters looking to fill um, some permanent but also some contract and freelance roles in social media so make sure your account is up to date and um, make sure it tells the best pos possible version of yourself and um, get recommendations from previous clients if you can um, there is a way that you can send a, a request through to them via the site and um, yeah, follow potential companies and other people that you may be interested in working for. It's, it, it's all about, it's, it's networking, but um, on, online. So I think in our industry, lots of people are very good at that. Um, so just make sure that all of your online presences are aligned. Um, I know it can be, if you've already got an online portfolio elsewhere that you're trying to keep up to date, you can sometimes forget about these other websites. But LinkedIn, I found, has been a key one for freelance social media work. My final point is word of mouth. Um, many of my clients are repeat clients. Um, many people I've worked with, it's because somebody else has verbally or personally referred me onto them. So I guess the key point here is to just do a bloody good job. Um, you know, in the first case, you need to be able to deliver what you're promising. Um, I always like to under promise and over deliver. And I find if you, if you do a good job and you're, and you're true to your word, um, people are always more than willing to um, pass on your referral and recommendation. And that works both ways. So I also um, often frequently recommend other freelancers or other, other bloggers for either jobs that I can't do or jobs that require more than one of us. Um, and then in turn, they often do the same back for me. So I think it's important to, to build a network of people that you trust um, because you don't want to be recommending someone um, who aren't gonna fulfill the job in the way you would because that does reflect on both of you. But once you've sort of formed those formed those informal arrangements, I think they can be quite beneficial for all parties. So um, yeah, be good at what you do, people. Um, be nice and uh, keep it clean and professional. So that's the end of, that was uh, of part two. That was a short and sweeter version than part one. I hope this has been useful. If you have any questions on anything I've mentioned in this series on freelance clients, let me know. Um, and any suggestions, for questions you would like to answer me, ask me in future vlogs, uh, pop them in the comments below. 
Thanks, guys. Bye.